1984 is, I believe, a quite terrifying masterpiece. So terrifying, in fact, I don't think I should like to read another like it. I think that allowing for the book being, after all, a parody, something like 1984 could actually happen. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. There will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-abasement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. is a 39-year-old man named Winston. Winston is a low-ranking member of the ruling party, working at the Ministry of Truth. The Ministry of Truth is involved with news media, entertainment, fine arts, education. His purpose is to rewrite history and change the facts to fit the party. This ruling party is a totalitarian government. The face of the party is a man known as Big Brother. In this world, the government has total surveillance over everything you do. The party controls people's news their perception of reality, their language, even their history. Their propaganda is so crazy that they even have two minutes a day where they watch a video of someone that goes against the party and it's a moment of hate where they literally just scream at the screen. In this book, the party is forcefully implementing a new inventive language called Newspeak, the official language of Oceana. They change definitions of words, they eliminate words. This way, they prevent political rebellion by eliminating all words related to it. Rebellious thoughts or having thoughts not aligned with what the party wants is illegal. They call it thought crimes. In this world, people snitch on one another. They're known as the thought police. This thought police are people who are hired by the party to monitor people off screen, to find, to hunt down, and report back to Big Brother. All of these things make Winston dislike the party. And it's obvious why. He lives in a world as a total slave to this tyrannical government system that makes every effort to control your thoughts and your life. Winston is not a sheep to the system. He is a free thinker, which is considered criminal in Oceana. Winston illegally attains a journal, which he expresses his dislike to the party in. He then forms a love affair in secrecy with a young woman named Julia. Initially, he suspects her to be a member of the Thought Police, but to make a long story short, he ends up in a love affair where they both express their thoughts of rebellion towards the party. Winston entertains thoughts of a rebellion happening in the shadows. Winston gets a message from a guy named O'Brien, a powerful member of the inner party. Winston is a part of the outer party, so O'Brien is a higher up. 
O'Brien invites Julia and Winston to his apartment, where he tells Winston that he hates the party too, and that he works with the, the rebellion. However, sadly enough, it was a lie. It was a bait to get Julia and Winston to admit their inner thoughts. O'Brien was a spy, a member of the Thought Police. The party sends both Winston and Julia to basically a re-education camp where they will torture people to death. And it's called, ironically enough, the Ministry of Love. Now you'll see this type of play on words a lot in the book as well as the movie. How the party plays with words to make a negative a positive. Manipulating the minds of the people. One of my favorite quotes from the book is, War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. The party wants you to do one thing, obey. And you'll see how they use language to manipulate the minds of people. And you can see that going on today, where they'll take something that's bad going on and they'll try to make it a positive if it suits their political purpose. For example, you'll see on the news today, a, a building that's literally on fire and they'll call it a mostly peaceful protest. You'll see people that are anti-fascist, acting fascist today. You'll see people that are anti-racist, but acting more racist than anybody. Are we living in 1984? Was George Orwell off by a few years? After reading this book and watching the movie, I was like, wow, the parallels to 1984 to 2020 were quite disturbing. I put a link for a video in the description where I saw Dave Rubin and Michael Knowles explain the parallels between 1984 and 2020. Regardless of where you stand politically, it's worth giving that video a watch to see how similar our world is to Oceania 1984. But anyways, back to the book. Winston and Julia are in this torture camp known as the Ministry of Love where they break down all of Winston's integrity. He submits to the party in every way. They even put his biggest fear on him. Rats. Little rats. Which make him say, please don't do this to me. Do it to Julia instead. Julia, his love. Giving up Julia was what O'Brien and the party wanted. It was a sign that his spirit has broken. Not even love was capable in 1984. Big Brother, the party, wanted people to obey and in a way be married to the state. We have to be aware of forces that try to intrude into our culture. I'm sure we all heard the phrase that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We have to be aware of Trojan horses. One example is BLM. I wish it wasn't a Trojan horse, but it has proven itself to be. Their organization is a Marxist Trojan horse. Their founders have said with their own mouth that they are trained Marxists. 
On their website mission statement, it is said that one of their goals is to destroy the nuclear family. Their supporters lack facts and statistics. They falsely identify as a victim. They're emotionally charged up without the right knowledge. And they're not even willing to have conversations with people with opposing views. They want to change the language of words. For example, they try to change the definition of racism. They want to remove history, statues. See that happening all over the US. They ignore facts and statistics. And they shut down anyone that opposes their party. They are not the only organization that is guilty of such things, but they are certainly in the spotlight, and they're allied with many powerful figures in politics and entertainment, as well as big corporations. 1984 is not a world anyone should want to live in. We must bring awareness to these things and have the discussion before it's too late. People nowadays are emotionally charged up and they're lacking facts, statistics, reason, kindness, compassion, and logic, and that's very dangerous. In a world like 1984, they want full control of your mind to the point where two plus two equals five, and you believe it. That is something that the party reveals to Winston after he was completely broken. Free people from all walks of life all over the world should reject such tyranny. While we still have freedom, speak your truth. Facts and statistics matter, and it is the people that allow such tyrannical powers to come into be. And it's also the people that can prevent such tyrannical powers from coming into be. It took a lot for me to share this information as how truth can sometimes be attacked by the ridiculous outrage mob, but who cares? It's the truth. And by telling someone the blunt truth, it is an act of courage and love. Thank you so much for watching this book summary slash comparison to today's world on George Orwell's classic, 1984. Besides working together to make 1984 fiction again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with as many people as possible. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get the channel to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It certainly is a stretch, but I believe it is possible. And until the next video, remember, always be learning, always be creating, and always be inspired.